So, hello everybody. Bitwig 5 is out and it brings a new browser. This browser caused quite some controversy between the Bitwig users and an intense discussion. Is it better or horrible? Some people even wrote Bitwig has no idea about information management. I think it needs a little bit of explanation, but I think it is an improvement. So let's look at it why that is the case. Here I open the old version of Bitwig 4.4 and if you open there the browser you see all these different columns and you have your results on the right. And then you have different categories, you have devices, presets, multi-samples -sample and music. What is the problem with that design and why did Bitwig decide that we need some changes? So one thing is while this is pretty straightforward, it's still a bit confusing. You have to find where your filter is and have to look pretty closely where to click here. And then, for example, if you want to find a bass drum, it normally doesn't matter if it's in a drum machine or if it's a sample and you want just to find it. Yeah, so you cannot change across these four areas. And also, if you open up the side browser, it also has these different filter types, but it's in a completely different design. You have to this up and down accordion technology here to find it. And it looks completely different. So here we are in Bitwig 5. And if I open up the browser here, it looks completely different, but I think much cleaner. You have basically four sections. You have here your results in the center. You have filters in that area. You have some quick sources, which I will explain in a second what it is. And finally, some detailed information about the item you have selected in the center. What is also nice is that you can and change the layout of it a bit. For example, I don't see any reason to have this large area for your results. Okay, you could make it smaller, which is also remembered, but you could also say you want to see the filters like this, which I think makes it a little bit easier to navigate. And you could also give the details a little bit more space. So what is now different with that browser? So the first main difference is that you see all kinds of items in one big list, which makes sense to put into such a place here. So I inserted here a device on the track. So a device could be a real device. It could be a device from a third party manufacturer like here in Absent. Or it can be a sample which then get just integrated into a sampler device. You can also choose how you like to have this sorting here happen. To do so, you do a right click and there is a sort order. So I'm now sorting this by kind and name. So what is the type and then there's a name. Or you could sort everything by name if you prefer that. Or you could say you want to see the newest ones on the top and the latest one on the bottom if you're looking for new content in your results. You can still do the same thing as previously. You open the browser and just type away. For example, you want to find pianos. You press the down arrow on your keyboard and then just select it with up, down and then press the return key to load the instrument in that case. So something that confused the hell out of me in the beginning, and this is, I think, what also makes some problems with other people to understand that is the differentiation between your sources. So like a pile of items, pile of sounds you have, and then the filters you do apply to them. So first looking at the sources. So the sources are opened if I click here on the top one. And there I can select from many different piles of sounds. One is, for example, the packages that are provided by Bitwig or third parties. And they make only sense, I think, to use them as a source. If you want to look into something new that Bitwig provided to you, for example, you want to say, I want to listen to all the sounds coming with here, this analog waves package. 
and then you can go through your sounds and look into them. You can also go here left and right to change the different sources of these packages to have a quicker access to them. But there's also different options. There's also collections, which I will explain also in a minute. You can say you want it by kind, for example, show me all instruments, all keys, only basses. So these are some pre-configurations that Bitwig made for you. Also drums, audio effects and so on. Or you can simply say, I want to have my full hard disk somewhere or a folder on my hard disk have this as a source. And you can also add new locations, new plugin locations here from that perspective. And to quickly access them, all of these items you find here in these four tabs can be pinned to this left hand pane, which is called the quick sources area. So for example, if I would like to see this chromatic percussion thing, I can drag and drop it to here, or I can right click on it and say add to quick sources and it will also show up here. And I can always reorder them by clicking, drag and dropping it and put it here, for example. Let's close that down. So I have now this source and I see now only this chromatic percussions. Now let's go to the thing that confuses people is that the filters are kept if you type something or did a filter to it. For example, if I type here, I only want to see marimbas, singular. I see now the one in this package. And if I go to all, so the top one shows everything. So the pile of sources is now everything that Bitwig knows about. I will still only see marimbas because this search is kept. And the same is true for the left-hand side. So any filter I apply will be kept when I switch quick sources. So this might be confusing, but just remember that. But there is also a trick. Uh, but first, let's show something here. Maybe let's say we want to filter by category and I want to see only mallets and this goes down to one. And if I click now somewhere else here on the keyboard, it will still be kept. So I have the mallet category and I have here the text search. If I go to everything, also here is suggested to go to everything. And you can quickly do that also with the tabulator key on your keyboard. You can switch then to that view. It will still keep the text. So let's do that again. Go here. And there is another trick. If I want to remove these filters, you can simply click it again. So if I click it again, it will remove the left hand side filters, which was not visible now because we have still this text filter, but not the text filter. So let's remove the text filter as well by here. And then you see all categories. It does not keep the category which we have selected here before. Okay, this was confusing. Let's show that in an example. So let's add here good old poly. And if I open now the browser, it will show you only the presets for the polysynth. And if I now want to see not only polysynth, I want to see everything. I click here again on that and now it removes that filter here, the polysynth filter, and we see now all devices. So what you just can remember, if you want to select something different now than polysynth, just double click here one of your things or double click everything and you will see the full search. The only exception is the text filter. So the text filter will be kept if I switch between these things, but by double clicking on it, you can reset the left part of your search which I think makes sense, but you need to understand this concept. So just to sum up again, you have your sources, which is a pile of information, which you can filter by these filters and by the text filters. You can reset these ones by double clicking your source and not the text search. So that's the only thing basically you need to understand. But that's just the beginning. You normally do not want to start from scratch when you search for something. You want to create your own collection. And there are three types of things you can do. You can create a normal collection, you can create a smart collection, and you can create snapshots. Wow. That's a mouthful. So let's start with smart collections. Smart collections are simply a search which you have here on the left, for example, 
let's say I want to have only pro sounds and the creator should be alchemy and yeah that's it and that's the result so now I can say I right click here and I say save smart collection I call it alchemy brass and I want to have this in orange why not and then it's automatically also added to the quick search bar. I can also remove that from the quick sources or as before, can change it around, put it here. And if I now click on everything and I click on the alchemy brass, I will get these filters. So now something to remember. If we been here or let's go back to the polysynth, open here from the polysynth, you know we have this filter for polysynth. If I now click on our search, I will see nothing because I have still the polysynth filter. Remember, I can click it again and then this filter is removed and I see now my previous saved search. So that's the basic concept you need to understand. Everything I can pin here is only a source. The filters are still applied. And what now is confusing as well, but also quite powerful, is that this is now a reduced amount of items. But I do not see their filters. As you remember, I added the uh, creator filter and I added a type filter, but you cannot see that. How do you see those filters again and how do you change that? So if I, for example, want to change something at this smart collection, this works like this. You right click here in one of these areas and there's now edit smart collection. And if I do that, you will now see all your filters again. So I see the brass filter and the alchemy filter. And now I could change it. For example, I want to say I also want to have that one as well and my Kawaii Kai 1 patches and that as well. You can simply update the collection again by clicking here and saying OK. And then you have now this larger list. So that's the second thing to keep in mind. If you created smart collections, you will not see their filters until you click on edit smart collection again. And this is a way to change them. Smart collections always do a search. So for example, if there is now a new Kawai K1 sound I would add, it will also show up there. But sometimes you want to create fixed collections which never change until you add something to them as well. And this is also possible in Bitwig. So let's go to everything first. So we see everything. One of these collections, fixed collections, is the favorites collection. And there is a quick search for that. If you click here on the right on this favorites icon, then you will see all your favorites. But you can also create your own. Let's, for example, go here and there is already something I created. And if I click on that, you will also see these collections here. So the information shows me to which collections this patch or this instrument or this device in that case belongs. And I created here a test collection. We can also create our own collection. For example, I would like to have a collection of, or oh, let's say some Atmo pad, only one. Let's go to everything. We have now a nice search result and you would like to create a collection for that. So you can select one of these items and say we want to have a new collection. Let's say these are Atmo pads, whatever that means. You can select color and now you can enable that. You could also say this is one of my favorite sounds or add it to this old collection. And now I can select any other ones I like and add them to that collection as well. And this is now also a source, remember that. So this source is also added automatically here. I have my Atmo pads, which I again could remove as well. I also see them here in the collections tab, by the way. So there are also now these Atmo pads. This is now a source, which means I can filter them by anything else again. So now I see all of them, but could say I only want to see the O1W one and narrow down the filtering as well. So being here on the right hand in this area, this is also something worth noting. You can click on everything in this information to narrow down the search as well. Maybe start here with something more. 
this is a choir and I only want to see choirs. So this is very quick to have choirs. Or you want to say the creator here is 01W. I only want to see patches of that creator. You can also turn it off again. And yeah, that's something you could click as well or go by the location. You can say only the ones I have in my assemble folder, Moscow. Second option, which is also a source. Remember, a source is only a collection of different items, which the current filter is always applied to. But there is something completely different now, which is a snapshot. A snapshot is now what you might want to have. It covers everything you see right now, can be stored in the snapshot and then recall to its fullest. For example, I did one FM4 pianos and this directly jumps to FM4 and even restores here the text field. So let's create something else. Let's, for example, search for FXPad, I don't know these ones and have a filter category. Okay, pad is already there, but nevertheless, just to show you that it works, I can do that and can say save snapshot. Let's call it FX pad. Okay. And then you can select it here as well from this menu. You know, here with this FM piano, here is the FX pad and it restores everything you just did. You have possibilities to create absolutely how it should look with these snapshots. You can create different kinds of sources with the weirdest searches you can come up with. And one thing I did not mention yet is you have also a hell of possibilities to use it from your computer keyboard. I already showed things like you can go up and down here in the list with the cursor keys, but you can also use Control and Alt if you here are in that area to move between these different filters. There are also shortcuts, for example, F jumps to the file kind, C does jump to the creator and L to the location. So there is also another way to quickly move between these things. Also here, your collections can be quickly accessed with the function keys. So F2 starts with the second one. The first one is always F1, F2, F3, F4, F5, and so on. Up to eight collections can be accessed via the function keys. So function key one up to eight. Another nice thing is if you quickly want to assign patches to, or devices or whatever to collections. Let's go here, for example. And if you select one of the patches, you see you have these three options and you also see if you right click it, the shortcuts. So zero always assigns it to favorites, but you can also press one or two to assign it to Atmo pads or testing one, two. So for example, I press now the zero key and it gets quickly assigned favorites. For example, if you are here pressing zero, pressing zero, pressing zero. So this quickly sets up your collection or add it to that one. And this is something nice to have as well. Then something else that needs to be mentioned is that these setups are stored for the different contexts and you have not only this instrument or device inserting context, there are many of them. So there is a context for browsing all instruments, browsing for audio of X, note of X, browsing for samples in the sampler and so on and so forth. And for each of them, you can store the setup and you can do this by going to browser settings and on the browser settings on the bottom, there is use current selections for this context. Sometimes it's not showing up if you made some changes which Bitwig cannot follow up in which context you are. This is possible sometimes. Then simply close it and open it up again. And then this menu will show up here at the bottom. And you can say use current selection for this context. If you already assigned one, there's also another option coming up here to reset it to the default setting. So there is also this option to configure this. Let's also look at the browser on the right hand. And the nice thing is now this works totally the same. You have your 
results. If you click on that, you have your detailed info and you have also your quick searches on top and the show all sources on top. So the only difference is that it's not oriented from left to right, but from top to bottom. But besides that, it works exactly the same. This tutorial got quite long and <laughs> this means this browser is really deep. It takes some head scratching to get used to it, but you just should sit down some minutes and think what you want to find quickly, what sounds you always need, and then create your collections and store your snapshots and assign things to your collections. And then will this massively speed up your workflow? And I hope you dig it finally. And with all these sounds and found items, make some funky music. <laughs>